Uh, the first time I've seen the whole movie, really. Uh, and, you, and you saw it in public like I, this. What was going through your mind watching it? I had no idea that they had my, so much of my interview in there. Uh, that was surprising. They made you such a, a prominent... Uh... <laughs> well, I had no idea what was coming up here. That was news to me. What did you think of the picture in general? Well, I thought they did a good job of interviewing a lot of people and give a good cross-section of what the war was like, really. I, I always remember, of course, being awakened for the early morning um, bomb group so, uh, assignments, and um, I was always a, a put a, a, had to sign up for it. And they said, uh, uh, "Mr. Maiden, um, it's time to save the world for democracy again." <laughs> so that's the way I started each of my 35 missions. Uh, but you started flying uh, in the Pacific before before Europe. No, I had uh, learned to fly uh, well, on a civilian uh, training program when I was a freshman at the University of Kansas after I'd finished high school. That was my first flight instructions at all. But, but, but Normandy, uh, the movie was, was referring to Normandy, but did you, were you flying in the Pacific or in Europe? No, I always flew out of England uh, during the war, yeah. All of my combat was from English airports. Yeah. Uh -huh. What did seeing this picture, what did it uh, remind you of? Well, of course, uh, the thing I think of was my crew of uh, ten men. Um, the other nine guys were from different nationalities almost. Uh, I think I was the only true American probably on the whole crew, strangely enough. But we all worked together and uh, that was... Uh, that was the thing that pleased me most is that they always did what I wanted them to do. I did take in training though uh, the opportunity to fly in each of their positions uh, during some training flights uh, including operating the bomb site so that I knew what they were going through during the combat missions before we ever got there. What other countries were they from? Uh, well my uh, Co-pilot was a, from a German background. We actually bombed his grandparents' hometown one time, which was strange. Uh, my navigator was uh, Italian. He was born in Rome. I had an Irishman. I, I had a Frenchman for a flight engineer. I had a, a, a bombardier that was from Texas. That's like a foreign country. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Even though I spent two years of training in Texas, I, and I married a girl from Texas later on. Do you still think it's like a foreign country? And like a foreign country. <laughs> yeah. I, but I, uh, I like Texas. I, uh, I, I spent two years of training, actually, in different places in Texas. Seeing, well, I'm glad to answer any questions you have. See, seeing this picture, and, and, and it, it's a reminder of the missions that were, that got shot down, people who got... got well, it brought together some unusual missions that I had that I've never really talked too much about. One in which what a, a squadron of B-24s off of my left wing were all shot down over a little island of Heligoland. Uh, all 12 of the B-24s went down with no parachutes. Uh, that was uh, probably the most dramatic of, of the experiences that I had. Other times, I remember our formation ran head-on into a, 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 a formation of B-17s going the opposite direction, same altitude, and we scattered all over the sky, never did complete the mission because we couldn't find each other, and I had to go home all by myself. Another time, I, of course, uh, ran out of gas at 30,000 feet because of high 200-mile-an-hour headwinds coming back, only making about 90 miles an hour actual speed yeah. over the English Channel because of a thunderstorm. What happened? And I had to climb up to 30,000 feet to get over the top of the, the thunderstorm and the, all my, my gas ran out one time after another so I had to make a landing from 30,000 feet with a, just a B-24 and no power at all. And I landed at a B-17 base, made it, made a beautiful landing, had to be towed in loaded up with gas and went back to my base and 
when I got back, uh, they had uh, divvied up my clothes because they said, I don't think he's coming back. <laughs> Another time I crash landed, of course, after losing three engines in France, and I got a photograph of that that was made by a British soldier, which was kind of unique because his first comment when we crash landed and we lost the nose wheel, it hit a frozen ground in, uh, just outside of Paris, and, and we and demolished the whole airplane, but no no one in my crew was injured. But uh, a British soldier came up and said, did you know you killed a rabbit? And I said, I chased him clear across France. I've got a picture of that, though. He made a photograph, and some way or another, it was in my file for many years before a friend of mine is in the movies, uh, was thumbing through, and I've made about 500 copies of that crash landing because it shows my entire crew that they all were safe. No one was actually even injured during, during the crash landing. That's fantastic. When you were, when you were uh, having your meetings at uh, Wings Over Wendy's yes. dur during the Obama years, you can look at me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's fine to look okay. at me. Yeah. During the Obama years, when he was going, uh, bending over backwards to, uh, uh, to scale down America's military, what were you guys thinking? Well, I've always felt that uh, power is the only thing that people really uh, worship in this world and uh, recognize it's important. So, uh, Res Respect? Respect, uh, the respect comes only because you are strong. So you can't, you can't deal from a position of weakness. And that's why I've always believed that we should have be strong military-wise. Yeah, yeah. What about... We shouldn't flaunt it, but on the other hand, we have to be prepared to pre protect ourselves. You think uh, China took advantage of us? I think China would take advantage of if we let them do that, but that's true of almost any other country that must be envious of the freedom that we have here in the United States. Probably no other country in the world ever really had the freedom that you had to exercise here in the United States. You think the weakness of the Democrats and the left would, uh, uh, would vulnerabilize this country? Uh, in I think we have to be very careful of not being strong because People really in the world respect strength, and uh, that, that's one of our biggest assets that we have. What do you think about this uh, beleaguerment of, of this uh, Trump administration? How, how the, uh, the Democrats and the media are trying to discredit and delegitimize him? Well, unfortunately, I think politics enters into so much of what people say they believe. And uh, I think that really we were so fortunate to have a country that was built on democracy and freedom. And uh, I believe our Constitution has held up so many years that uh, we, try to, we try to manipulate it just for our own personal benefit. Well. But with, with regard to uh, the attacks on the White House now? The, the, the attacks on the White House. I think we have to support our president, whoever he is. I know my, my father and mother were really Republicans uh, early, but then they also voted for Roosevelt during the war. And uh, I felt that it, he was, was a good leader for, for us during the war. And I, I supported him myself for my first vote that I ever had. Unfortunately, why later on I became more enamored with uh, the presidency of uh, Eisenhower. He, of course, I, I was a little prejudiced because I was from Kansas and he was from Kansas. But he was always one of my favorites, much like uh, Ronald Reagan has been. Uh, two, two of my top presidents that you know, I've seen in my lifetime. Was there any awareness? Were you uh, airmen aware of what was going on in the German concentration camps, Polish concentration camps? Not com completely. We, uh, we did have a radio broadcast, you know. The, the Germans would broadcast in English to us, of course, trying to give us to give up. Uh, but uh, at the same time, um, we knew that uh, we had to 
stick to our, our guns, really. And uh, unfortunately, that meant a lot of bombing missions. I saw a lot of planes go down, though. One of our biggest targets was the machine that uh, produced the war materials for Germany. And so we bombed a lot of steel plants and uh, other places like that. Uh, we also did attack the airfield. I, I had one mission where we dropped 2,000 pound bombs on Hitler's headquarters at a little town called Zosen, about 20 miles south of Berlin. I always thought that, I always felt that we, we got him, certainly those are the biggest bombs that, we, uh, that I carried was the 2,000 pounders. And he was, had a hideout there in, about just south of Berlin. And so it, it always made me feel good to think that I bombed his headquarters.